There's something strange about the place Voyager is drifting through right now. It's not classroom outer space. It's not the silent, empty nothingness most people imagine. And it's definitely not the familiar territory shaped by the sun. Voyager is in a kind of cosmic borderland, a place that shouldn't feel like a boundary at all. Yet every reading coming back from the spacecraft insists that something out there is shifting, bending, and behaving in ways scientists never expected. Before we dive deeper, welcome back to Beyond Space. where we explore the universe one mind-blowing idea at a time. If you enjoy exploring the unknown with us, make sure to like the video, subscribe, and leave a comment. Your support helps this channel reach even more curious minds across the cosmos. What makes this moment even more mysterious is that Voyager itself is almost silent. No cameras, no sweeping panoramas, just faint, steady numbers beamed across a gulf so vast it takes more than a day for those signals to reach us. Numbers coming from instruments older than most people watching this video. And somehow those numbers keep saying, this place shouldn't behave like this. So what exactly is Voyager crossing through? What kind of cosmic frontier bends the rules we thought we understood? And why does this strange region reveal more questions than answers? The journey begins nearly half a century ago. In 1977, NASA launched Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 two spacecraft built for a mission that was never meant to last. They were engineered to visit the giant planets, snap a few once-in-a-lifetime pictures, and then quietly drift into the darkness, outliving their purpose within a decade. But Voyager didn't fade. It kept going. It showed us Jupiter's oceans of storms, the churning volcanoes of Io, Europa's fractured ice, hiding a possible ocean world beneath. Uranus's tilted rings, Neptune's deep blue haze, Triton's cryovolcanic geysers. Voyager rewrote humanity's understanding of the outer planets, and then it kept going. Both probes sailed beyond the orbit of Neptune, beyond the region where the sun's light becomes little more than a memory, and toward a part of the solar system no human instrument had ever reached. Voyager 1 climbed high out of the plane of the planets. Voyager 2 stayed in a lower angled path. As of late 2025, Voyager 1 travels at 17 km per second, Voyager 2 at 15.3 km per second. Speeds earned from slingshot maneuvers around the gas giants, speeds powerful enough to fling each spacecraft toward the interstellar void. Today, both probes have crossed beyond the Sun's protective bubble. Voyager 1 sits at 169 astronomical units from Earth. Voyager 2 at 139 astronomical units, farther than any human creation has ever traveled. Yet what surrounds them is not the calm, empty darkness people imagine. It is stranger, more dynamic, and far more alive. Most diagrams show the edge of the solar system as a clean circle, the heliopause, the place where the solar wind stops and interstellar space begins. Reality is nothing like those diagrams. Voyager 1 reached the heliopause in 2012, and instead of a soft transition, it hit something like a cosmic wall. In a single moment, the flow of solar particles vanished, galactic cosmic rays surged, the magnetic field abruptly twisted into a new orientation. It was like stepping out of one world and into another instantly. Voyager 2 crossed the boundary six years later, but its experience was smoother, more gradual, more organic. This difference revealed something profoundly important. The heliopause isn't a stationary bubble. It is a wrinkled, shifting, dented frontier that moves and reshapes itself over billions of kilometers. A living boundary, a breathing system, and crossing it was only the beginning. Outside the sun's bubble, both voyagers detected something completely unexpected. A region of extraordinarily hot plasma, tens of thousands of degrees, but not the kind of heat that burns. The density is too low. Instead, individual particles are racing through space at incredible speeds. This hot layer is forged from the collision between the solar wind, which has traveled outward for billions of kilometers, and the gas that fills the galaxy. Two colossal forces grinding against each other at cosmic scale. The results are wild compression, heating, twisting magnetic fields, shock waves, extreme turbulence where models predicted calm emptiness. Nothing about this region behaves the way scientists expected. 
and that pattern continues. Voyager's instruments are simple by modern standards. Magnetic field detectors, plasma wave sensors, cosmic ray counters, no cameras, no fancy imaging, just pure physical measurement. But in a place no human machine has gone before, even basic sensors reveal revolutionary information. Voyager 1 sees the interstellar magnetic field stretched like a taut rope, stable and consistent. Voyager 2 detects ripples and turbulence, suggesting pockets of compressed plasma and shifting pressure. From just these two distant points, scientists are mapping the shape of the galaxy's magnetic influence and how it presses against the sun's outer shell. The probes also detect shockwaves from violent solar activity, events that left the sun years earlier, waves that now ripple through the outer frontier where the solar wind no longer dominates. Every one of these discoveries reveals how the heliosphere, our star's protective shield, expands, contracts, and breathes. And yet, despite these breakthroughs, keeping Voyager alive has never been more difficult. Its power source has been fading since the 1990s. Every year, the plutonium inside the generator produces less energy. Engineers have already shut down heaters, instruments, backup systems, anything that isn't essential. Some components are operating at temperatures far colder than ever tested, and still functioning. In May 2025, NASA revived Voyager 1's primary roll thrusters, silent since 2004, by rewiring decades-old power circuits to prevent a fuel line rupture. In April 2025, engineers successfully rewrote memory pathways on an aging computer chip suffering radiation damage, a repair never attempted before. Every command takes over 24 hours to reach the spacecraft. Every response takes another day to return. Every decision carries risk. Because if a single component fails, Voyager could fall silent forever. Crossing the heliopause didn't mean leaving the solar system. Not really. The sun's gravitational influence extends much farther. Now the Voyagers drift toward the inner Oort cloud, a sparse halo of icy comets they won't reach for centuries. It will take 300 years to reach its inner edge, 30,000 years to exit it, 40,000 years before Voyager 1 passes within 1.6 light years of the Stargleaser 445. Long after their power runs out, long after their voices fade, long after anyone alive today is gone, and yet they will continue to drift, silent, cold, carrying the golden record, a message from humanity meant to last a billion years. Voyager matters because it gave us the first real measurements of interstellar space, because it redefined the shape of the heliosphere, because it discovered regions we didn't even know existed. Voyager proved that durable engineering can outlast its creators, that simple instruments can make world-changing discoveries, that human curiosity can build something capable of touching the stars. And one day, when Voyager finally powers down, when the last whisper of electricity fades, it will still be out there, traveling, waiting, enduring. The first human-made object to enter interstellar space, a message in a bottle cast into a cosmic ocean, a reminder that exploration never truly ends, it simply keeps going.